what your relationship is to the person that you've nominated and why you felt compa compelled to nominate them. So hi, I'm Kirsty Connolly. So my relationship with Martin is I work with him. Um, he is a director at Tourvest and I work in the back office with the marketing department. So um, I've, yeah, so, and I do a lot of operational stuff. So um, the sense of oceans, which he's been working on, worked closely with him in, in that side of it. Um, I've compelled to um, nominate Martin. He started up a company, uh, well, a division of Tourvest called EDNC, E.DNC. Um, which is taking um, our Tourvest B2B platform and making it available to small and medium uh, DMCs in South Africa um, for no charge. So, and he's come from that background himself. He had a company called 8K Holidays, um, which he still has, and um, uh, Mozambique Voyages, which is what Tourvest bought, which is how he then came on board to the company. So he's had experience in being a small based DNC, and then now through Tourvest had the experience of being part of a much bigger company with um, with a lot more. I don't want to say advantages, um, but you understand where, what I mean. So going into COVID with everything that's happened, he's he's got a very um, direct line to how these DMCs have been feeling um, with the strain of the pandemic. Um, so he really pushed hard to get EDMC going and to, to launch this, this, this brand, this platform, um, so that those, ED, those DMCs that are out there are struggling, have something that can help them. So they no longer have um, you know, budget for uh, admin or anything like that. And EDMC incorporates all of that and they get this for free. So, and I thought you know, to do that, to try and boost everyone else in the industry when that's, something they need a lot at the moment is definitely something worth mentioning. And has that inspired you to try and help others and to give others a hand up? Oh, most definitely. I think it's definitely opened my eyes a lot more. Um, and I mean, I'm, I try to be involved in the platform as much as possible and to get it out there you know, uh, not just people that I've worked with, but people that I know who might need it. So it's, yeah, it's just trying to get the word out there. So that, because it's such a great opportunity and for people that just need to try and get their business going and, you know, just need that leg up. Um, so for me, definitely to try and just spread the word and get as many people to know about it as possible, because I know it can help. Lovely. That's it. Thank you so much, Kirsty. Oh, we appreciate okay. it. Sure, <laughs> sure. There you go. Okay. All good. Great. Awesome. So thank you thank for you. that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure when we're interviewing Martin. It is sometime this week. Okay. But yeah. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate the nomination. You'll, you'll love him. He's, he loves talking and he's just such an enthusiastic, he's like an energizer buddy, Martin is. He's oh. just so enthusiastic <laughs> and such a lovely people person. He's awesome. Awesome. So he's really done. Was it his idea, or what? How did it, did so it come to fruition? It, it started as an idea even before the pandemic, um, but it got tabled. And then when all this started happening, he really started pushing um, Martin Beast on it because he knew it had, the you know he knew what it could do, um, and he knew that it had legs to go forward with. So I feel like I said um, coming from that. Um, that, that small to medium DMC background of his and it being, knowing what these people are probably going through, it's, it is, it's something he really did push. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, it took him, it took him a few months to convince that he just didn't give up. So yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Have a lucky day. It's a pleasure. You too. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> you too. Bye. 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 Martin, tell us a little bit about you. Give us some background about you in the tourism industry, your journey up until now, and where you are at the moment. Okay, so uh, yeah, my name is Martin Mellard. As you can hear, it's originally from Holland. 
I grew up as a child in an expat family. My father worked for United Nations and did development work in West Africa. And when he got a post in 1991 in Mozambique, I came for the first time to Mozambique. I saw South Africa, I saw an opportunity. Having grown up in, in Africa, I thought, okay, this is my chance to get back here. And uh, the gap was uh, where I saw, where I saw the gap was tourism. So I, uh, and Penny, the story is where I actually met an elderly couple running a guest house on the banks of the Crocodile River in Malalam. And I thought, why am I sitting in an office if you can also make money on a beautiful spot of the planet and instead of a gray mess in Europe? And background in Africa made me come. I opened the doors of Outkick Holidays, my D, uh, personal DMC in 1998 based out of Nelspruit and I combined Mozambique because that was a country I knew and I saw the potentials there. They came out of a war and I actually been a pioneer in Mozambique tourism. My nickname at the trade shows was Mr. Mozambique. And if everyone didn't know, they would ask me, which was great, including Tourvest and Tourvest eventually said, I think you should join our team. And that took a few years between me and Martin to two pioneers on our own and trying to match, uh, but uh, we find a fantastic energy together. And I joined Tour Vest in February 2019 with the idea of uh, launching a whole island group. And we started our new division, Sands of Oceans, under Tour Vest. And we were in about, we were in about to sign on Madagascar uh, entity in Mauritius, St. Helena. And then we, our friends Corona came across. So everything came to a standstill. And um, yeah, we started doing other things, or I think we've been forced to do other things to, to stay alive. So that's briefly how I then had the last 23 years in South Africa for me. So you switched up and went back to a desk and now because of coronavirus have had to pivot. Tell us a little bit about what it is that you've been doing to change your circumstances and the circumstances of others as a result. I think um, uh, we, we are, of course, you know, when March hit and we suddenly start incomes being diminished to zero and uh, we soon find out that April, May, June, this, is, this uh, was going to last and uh, and we had a board meeting. We said, Guy, let's come out stronger and see what we can do. You know, what can we see do together? We can't do this on our own. And uh, we had a project where, uh, and the project was called EDMC uh, before, where we would monetize our database. And we tried to set it up and it actually didn't work. So we had parked it uh, a year ago, a year before uh, Corona hit us. And I took it off the shelf and I said to Martin, our CEO, I said, would, would you mind trying to actually bring this back into the trade? And the idea was there's so many people being retrenched. We saw it happening in our company. We saw it happening all around us. I thought uh, if these people who have been working for 20 years, these, these probably the pioneers of South African inbound tourism, they now ending on the street are we going to let them go and go into other industries or are we going to help them? Now, what do they need? Uh, they have no income, so the costs are zero. So we monetized our database and said, come on, join us. We do the procurement for you. We'll have a loaded reservation system for you. We have a maintained reservation system for you, so you don't need all that staff. Uh, the ad, uh, you have one payment portal. You just pay us once a month on statement, so you don't need to pay every single entity you, have, you add into a tour. And you can actually work from home on your laptop and concentrate on sales and set up your company. Because it's easier said they have the knowledge. All these experts have the knowledge, but they lack the, the, the access to a, a comprehensive database at, of course, a, a competitive rate. So um, I worked a few years, a few months on it. I tweaked it and we made it ready. It's only for the, uh, I must say, for the South African based DMCs or Southern African, Namibia, Botswana DMCs can make use of it as well. And it's reaching out a hand and say, guys, join us. There's a minimum markup on our rates. There's absolutely no hidden costs. There is no cost. You can join for free. You don't sign a contract, but 
you have a fully operational system for you to be very quickly operational and effective to your clients. And how has it been? Uh, how has it been received? Are you giving the, uh, this technology for use for free? But I guess you know the situation at the moment is that people's mindsets are not in an entrepreneurial space, and it requires them to be entrepreneurial. So how have they? How? What is the feedback that you received? Okay, we launched in the, on the on the first of November. The first of November, we got uh, uh, quite a quite a good response from the initial launch. I think we signed up about close to fifteen DMCs by now. We also allocated that it's predominantly for the the the, the medium and small DMCs who who are lack of system. The bigger ones still have their systems. The bigger organizations had might have had also a little bit more cash to save themselves or or multiple the, uh, their companies uh, in that way. Uh, others, those who have been retrained or those who had to dramatically reduce and cut all the overheads, including systems, licenses, uh, staff to operate, uh, there the system kicks in as an assistant because it provides a, 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 a platform, a bookings platform. So the DMC will still do all the sales work. They do the quotes. They use our system to rate accessibility. They can make quotes, they can make in itineraries. Only once it becomes a booking, they actually kick into gear. Our system process the booking, process the booking. We have a dedicated uh, consultant available per DMC. They will then handle the booking, confirm. And once the booking is confirmed and invoiced, it's back to the original DMC. So we literally are, how much you call it? We almost a booking.com a, a, on steroids because we have far more services for the DMC environment. Having come from that uh, environment and launching a startup yourself, what, what are some of the things that you know that your peers in the tourism industry are feeling and grappling with at the moment? <laughs> Uh, you 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 hit the nail on the uh, on the head. Is because that's exactly where where I picked it up. Having started our own DMC from scratch and built it out to a medium sized company, and then at in after twenty years having joined a corporate, I quickly found I quickly found what the corporates had. I also saw where the gaps are for smaller DMCs, uh, and 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 find that I, I could very quickly feel the pain of the DMCs. Uh, not only not only financial because of course that was the first, but also staff. If you eventually don't have uh, uh, staff to run your systems or to keep your systems up, which are are crucial, and it's, it comes at a high cost and 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 and, and many hours. And uh, besides that, the development the, there is a whole team at Two of Us continuously developing this this software, which is an in-house developed program. So. As a smaller DMC, there is just no funds for that. You can't, you can't, uh, you can only buy off the shelf software and then tweak it to your company, but you can't really uh, create uh, certain demands if certain clients have demands of functionalities, which in in house developed software we can. So I think that uh, I very quick saw that the benefits from both, and I definitely used my, my 20 years of startup entrepreneurial DMC combined with the uh, the corporate environment uh, I've joined now. What is your prediction for the next six to 12 months, not only in that EDMC space, but in general in the DMC space? What do you see? Um, I'm, I'm, I've been optimistic till January. I told everyone, don't worry, it's going to be okay. And uh, actually, after Christmas, I maybe got a wake-up call. Maybe I didn't want to see it. I think if I look at the space, uh, vaccines are becoming suddenly, suddenly. First, we talk borders. Now we talk vaccines. So what's next? Uh, or our first is borders, then it's second waves, and then it's vaccines. So, you know, that's number three. What's number four? I don't know. Uh, my prediction is, is that... It will ease up. Numbers are dropping. So probably um, August, July, August, September, we might get some more guests. In the DMC space, uh, I'm sure people are with me on that thought and trying to survive and, and using their last resources to pull through there. What I see in the international agents uh, uh, market as well is that there is a lot of uh, amalgamations, a lot of 
two operators starting working together, they're buying uh, packages from each other. And I think uh, in the in the DMC, those, those who have made it and managed to keep their heads above water uh, will, will, but the numbers will have to come quick. You know, if we're gonna run at 30 or 30, 40%, what was the prognosis for the rest of the year? That might just not be enough. And and so yes, the EDMC at no cost would definitely come in as a helping hand, helping hand where I'm saying, guys, just use the system. And like I said, there's no contract to it. Use it, even if you use it for six months to bring yourself up to scratch and 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 walk your own way. But it is a it's definitely a tool out there. Uh, what what a lot of people in 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 need of data and in need of progress or progressing their companies could use. So beyond um, beyond the tool, and you sort of touched on it. How how do you extend your runway from a mindset perspective when you know that you have all of these insurmountable challenges? Having been a startup, having gone through lots of tough challenges, Mozambique is not an easy country to do business in. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. How do you keep your mindset? How do you extend that runway for hope as as a startup? How do you keep keep that energy alive? Yeah, I think I think it's a challenge. You know, some some people are are, are made for challenges. They like to tackle challenges. Some people are ra rather hang back. I think an entre an entrepreneur is, to be an entrepreneur is not easy. You because you certainly need to have a lot of skills in different fields, and you might uh, be better at others and i happen to always have a lot of energy i i like to look i use for instance mozambique for and because yes it was a difficult destiny but therefore also a gap in the market so it might be difficult but it also creates opportunities because a lot, a lot of people around us thinks it's difficult so and yeah how do you keep spirits up i think a healthy lifestyle uh, stay in difficult times just stay positive you know stay, stay positive and approach and 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 it, it it's difficult but not impossible and we have a saying at two of us we said guys we've been hit by this pandemic let's try to get out to come out stronger and not weaker and yes it needs a lot of motivation and uh, physical mental and uh, and and you have to support each other and and hence your your initiative lifting each other you know people perhaps need that people need Others need to reach out their hands, you know, I can help you here and not always want something back for it, but just, you know, help her. Because at the end of the day, and that was one of our drives as well, if a lot of DMCs and so other service suppliers like wheels and guides all disappear off the market and go to other industries, what have we left as a inbound tourism? Now we're getting, we're having a lot of clients coming to our country, we can't offer half of the service we used to. So we suddenly are not very competitive anymore in, in the world tourism environment as a destination because we have totally decimated our services. And I think we should help each other and, and make sure that we still stand out as a world-class destination and, and quickly rebuild it together. Tell me something about Martin outside of the tourism industry. So who are you when you're not a tourism person? Um, um, I was Dutch champion full contact karate in Holland. I was runner of European full contact karate, so I took the most difficult version. Then I picked up cycling in South Africa, and I thought, okay, there's a there's a small race called the Cape Epic. So I did that six times and podiums at Epic on one day. So I I think I'm made for challenges. <laughs> To me, I'm very sportive. I have two beautiful children. I live in White River, close to Kruger National Park. I love nature and absolutely love travel and hence uh, living on this part of the world. Is there any last message that you have for your peers, your friends, your colleagues in the Southern African tourism industry? Um, yeah, yeah, there's one. Just don't give up hope, guys. We've done it. We've come a long way. We all together have come a long way. And I think uh, it's not easy, but hang in there, hang in there. There will be a change. And uh, I would say everyone who wants to invite them more are welcome to reach out on the EDMC website. They're more than welcome. My personal details are on there. They reach out to me. I'll gladly be of assistance if they're as small as a niece around. Would love to have 
a bit of background, I'll, uh, I'll gladly help because at the end of the day, having a healthy tourism environment will, uh, uh, we all benefit from it.